Welcome to nonstopneuron.com, where learning medical concepts is as easy as watching cartoons. In this video, we will talk about types of membrane potentials in smooth muscle. Let's get started. First of all, smooth muscles have more varieties of membrane potentials than skeletal muscles. The skeletal muscles contract only with action potentials, but the smooth muscles show diverse types of membrane potentials. These potentials include action potential, which can be spike potential, or action potential with plateau, slow wave potential, and junctional potential. And let's not forget that underneath all these, the resting membrane potential in smooth muscles is minus 50 to minus 60 millivolts. Now let's see these types one by one. First, action potentials. Here, the spike potentials are similar to the action potential that we see in skeletal muscles. They are seen in most unitary smooth muscles. Their duration can be from 10 to 50 milliseconds. They can be elicited by external factors, such as neuronal stimulation, hormones, stretch, or even internally by the muscle itself, as we will see in slow wave potential. The next type of action potential, the one with plateau, is similar to action potential in cardiac muscles. In this, we have a prolonged depolarized state before repolarization called a plateau. The duration of such action potential can be from hundreds of milliseconds to a second. This long plateau allows prolonged contraction of the muscle. It's seen in gastrointestinal tract, ureter, uterus under some conditions, and certain vascular smooth muscle cells. So these were the types of action potentials. Now let's talk about the mechanism of these potentials. The smooth muscles mainly have calcium channels, there are only a few sodium channels. So contribution of sodium to smooth muscle action potential is not significant. The action potential is mainly produced by calcium channels. These channels are L-type of voltage-gated channels. Such channels are slow to open. So the entry of calcium, and therefore the depolarization, is slower than that in skeletal muscles. Then these channels are slow to close also. So the repolarization is also delayed. In addition, the delayed opening of potassium channels also contributes to delayed repolarization. In some fibers, the repolarization is so delayed that a prolonged plateau is seen. So this is how action potentials are produced. The calcium entering during an action potential contributes to the contractile process also. Thus, the calcium in smooth muscles has a dual role in stimulation, as well as in contraction. So, this was about action potential. The next type of membrane potential seen in smooth muscle is slow-wave potential. These are generated by the fiber itself, without any external stimulation. The exact mechanism is not known, but it's believed to be due to cyclic changes in the pumping of positive ions out of the cell means for some time, positive ions like sodium or calcium are pumped rapidly out of the cell. Removal of positive ions makes the membrane negative. Then for some time, their extrusion is reduced. So their retention in the fiber makes the potential positive. This way, the potential keeps oscillating. This is called slow wave potential. Such potential changes occur locally and do not spread. Also, they cannot cause muscle contraction. However, during the positive phase of the potential, if the voltage reaches to the threshold of about minus 35 millivolts, the action potential is generated as usual. And as we know, the action potential can spread along the membrane and cause muscle contraction. In one peak, a slow wave, one or more action potentials may appear. This repetitive sequence of action potentials causes rhythmic contraction of the muscle. So the slow waves, which are responsible for this rhythm, are also called pacemaker waves. They occur in a frequency of several cycles per minute. They are seen in gut smooth muscles, where they cause rhythmic contractions. So this was about the slow waves. Now let's talk about the junctional potential. They are seen in multi-unit smooth muscles, like those in the iris and piloerector muscles of hair. Fibers in such muscles are very small in size to generate an action potential. 
In them, the neurotransmitters are released close to the cell membrane. They cause local depolarizations. This is called junctional potential. They are equivalent to end plate potentials, seen in skeletal muscles. These potentials spread electronically in nearby areas. This much is enough to excite the entire cell because of its smaller size. Thus, the action potential that spreads in a self-generative manner is not seen in such fibers. So these were all the types of membrane potentials seen in smooth muscles. Now let's have a quick summary. Different smooth muscles show different types of membrane potentials. Spike potentials are similar to those seen in skeletal muscles, and they occur in most unitary smooth muscles. Action potential with plateau allows prolonged contraction in the gastrointestinal tract, ureter, uterus, etc. Calcium ions are mainly responsible for action potential in smooth muscles. Slow wave potentials are rhythmic oscillations in the membrane potential. They do not spread themselves or cause contraction. But they elicit action potentials repetitively, which causes rhythmic contraction of muscles, as seen in the gut. Finally, the junctional potential is seen in small, multi-unit smooth muscle fibers, like those in the iris and pylorector muscles. In this, local depolarizations cause muscle contraction without action potential. That's it for this video. If you have come this far, please consider supporting me by liking, commenting, and sharing the video. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.